This is amazing. I am ex so excited. I cannot wait to bring this review to you, an unboxing review in my opinion on the Gigabyte GeForce GTX 670 coming to you now on Maxed Out. So today I'm going to be reviewing the Gigabyte GTX 670 WinForce X3 graphics card. This marks the first time I've had an NVIDIA card since the GeForce 6800 series, and in PC years, that's pretty old. There are a few reasons for the switch, though. Number one, I've had some performance problems with the HD 6870s from AMD. I know a lot of people have had no problems with these cards in Crossfire, so I wouldn't say that my problems are widespread, but nevertheless, I'm experiencing lag and less than optimal performance. I spent weeks and in some cases months trying to figure out why things weren't working right and it basically came down to this. It's an anomaly. I did all the normal procedures like driver sweeping, reinstalling the drivers, installing the latest drivers and even rolling back to the best performing drivers of the, uh, of the past. However, I just couldn't get things running smoothly. And on paper, sure, everything looked great in benchmarks like 3 d Mark and Unigen's Heaven. I have a beast of a system. But in my favorite games like Battlefield 3, Batman Arkham City, and Skyrim, I was seeing screen tearing and real lagginess or stuttering. Not what I expected from two high-end graphics cards. Now to be fair, as of the time of this video, the Catalyst 12.7 beta drivers worked amazing for me. Probably the best drivers I've ever used with these cards. But unfortunately, it's a little too late for me. I've already made up my mind to go green once again. The second reason is Adaptive V-Sync. Basically, Adaptive V-Sync is a feature added in the 300 series GeForce drivers alongside the GTX 680, although you don't need one of those cards to take advantage of the technology. In short, the tech promises to prevent screen tearing while keeping frame rates smooth. Ever notice how you can get 80, sometimes 90 FPS in a game with V-Sync shut off, but with it on, the, the FPS will drop like 10 or 20 frames? Well, this technology claims it can prevent all that. You can see more of it on NVIDIA's website. Uh, number three, FXAA. This form of anti-aliasing tech also is pioneered by NVIDIA. It should be noted that Radeon cards have a similar feature called MLAA, but in most of the tests that I've seen, that technology falls short of FXAA. Anti-aliasing is an age-old problem that is very hard to eliminate unless you sacrifice frame rate. Until now, it's been hard to balance visual fidelity with performance, but it seems NVIDIA has hit the jackpot this time around. Now, there's a couple reasons why I chose the GTX 670 over the 680. From all the benchmarks that I've seen online, because you can't test video cards out before you buy them like games, it's hard to avoid depending on some sort of benchmark result. There's a very small difference in performance between the two. They both have the same architecture. There's just a difference in the number of CUDA cores. Um, 1344 on the 670 to 1536 on the 680. And the core clock speeds are 680 MHz to 1071. Still very small margins. I'll post the links to more information on why that's all important. Still, in most cases, one GTX 670 can outperform two HD 6870s um, and is about the same as one 680. Two was the price. On average, the difference between a 670 and a 680 is a hundred dollars. That's a lot of beans. With very little performance difference, why not save some money? Two reference 6870s run very loud and hot also. I had to put my GameCon 780 headsets on just to hear the dialogue in my games. It would give me a headache time and time again having to deal with that. So those are just a few reasons why I decided that I was going to switch from AMD to NVIDIA. Now some people said that I probably could have gone up to you know the, six nine, uh, the 7970 um, because it had more memory and it had more memory bandwidth um, being 384 bit. Um, but from all the different technologies, like I said, from the adaptive V-Sync to um, FXAA um, to the fact that developers seem to favor NVIDIA a lot more, or they get more help from NVIDIA, um, I decided that I was going to give it a shot this time around. So what we're going to do in the next segment is we're going to do the unboxing of it, then we're going to do some gameplay, and uh, we'll do 
it's more or less real world benchmarkings, no real Unigen or anything like that, because um, most people aren't going to really care about that kind of stuff. They just want to see how their game is going to play. And then at the end, I'll give you a conclusion to see if my purchase is worth it, because I'm stuck with it now. So we'll see you in the next segment.